Hey folks, Chris Schmidt, Key West Makers. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cabinet for small parts organizers. I made mine after seeing a video of Adam Savage's shop where he uses a cabinet similar to this for, I believe he also uses Sortimo boxes. Sortimo, Sortimo, Sortimo. I actually have no idea how to say it. I'm going with Sortimo. But it doesn't really matter what brand you use. It's really a cool project for anybody who has small parts to organize as part of your hobby or your job, whether you're sewing, crafter, woodworker, electrician, you get the picture. Next I've got to cut a groove in the back here to accept the back panel. And I also have to groove out the sides to accept the top and bottom to sit in. Do that with the old dado blade. Containers slide in and out of the cabinet on runners, and I want to get those runners installed before I assemble the cabinet. So I'll make those parts next and get them installed in the sides of the cabinet before I clamp the cabinet together. Each of these brackets will get attached to the side with four screws, no glue. Um, in case I want to adjust them later for different containers or even if one breaks off. And I would normally do this with my handheld drill, but since this is a really thin material, I don't want to plunge this too deep. So I'm going to do it on my drill press where I can set a stop, a limit on how deep I go. I got everything glued and clamped up last night and you can see the cases slide in here really nicely. Two more things to do then cut the back panel and I want to trim out the front edge of this plywood and I've got some Douglas fir here from another project that I'll run through my thickness planer just to get it to a standard thickness. Cut it on, my, cut it on the table saw and nail, glue and nail it on here. Okay let's get some glue on the back here and Hope like heck that the back panel fits. What do you think, I'm some sort of a lunatic? I dry fit it off camera before I glued it. And a little sanding just to soften the edges up a bit. As I told you in the beginning, this cabinet has a secret, and that's a pull-out drawer. When I watched the, the video of Adam Savage's cabinet, the one thing that I was struck by is he had to pull out the containers and take them over to another area to open them up and pull out the contents, then take the container back and put it in its shelf. So I wanted a pull-out drawer, or a pull-out shelf, if you will, that I could set the containers on while I'm looking through them. So at the very bottom of this cabinet, there is just such a pull-out drawer. You can see it's a little bit wobbly and it could also pull out. So I've cut a few little pieces here that will get attached to the back of the drawer and the underside of this runner. And that will A, keep this from rocking and B, keep it from pulling out too far. So let's get those glued in place. And just a little bit of dowel ought to give me a nice handle to pull this out with. Well folks, here it is completed and in use in my shop. There's a few points I want to go over about the build, but first I just want to say thanks to everybody who watches the videos and is subscribed to the channel. It really helps us a lot and we do appreciate it. 
I put my pull-out shelf on the bottom because of how I'm using this cabinet. It is up in the air as opposed to being a lower cabinet. If I was going to make this a lower cabinet, I would have put this pull-out shelf at the top. The pieces I use for the runner are an inch vertically and three quarters of an inch horizontally. And I left each of the sides a quarter inch thick. The gap between the top of each cabinet and the runner is one quarter inch. And the gap that I left on the side, the total gap is also a quarter of an inch. So those guidelines should work no matter what kind of cases you use. And that folks brings us to the end of this video build. Thanks again everyone for watching. Chris Schmidt signing out from Key West.